Hi there, and welcome to this lecture. In this video, we will look into how we can install Perl modules using cpanm, aka cpan the Perl's package slash module manager. Before we begin, I would like to know that Perl actually already comes with package manager called cpan, that is, without an M at the end. So this begs a question, why would we be using something that's called cpanm instead of the default package manager? Well, think of cpan and cpanm being exactly the same. They both are needed to install and manage Perl modules. However, the cpanm requires no configuration and is much less noisy in comparison to cpan when installing modules. Also, it is incredibly easy and quick to install cpanm when using Perlbrew, so there's really no reason why not to get it on your system. Now, to install cpan on your system, you want to go to your terminal and you want to type Perlbrew. Perlbrew. And what are you going to get is a bunch of commands related to the Perlbrew, Perl, and so on. What we're interested in this case is a command that says install cpanm. So let's run this. So if I copy this command and type perlbrew followed by install cpanm and run this, it's literally going to take a split second for cpanm to be installed in your system. Or you can verify that this is running, you can do which cpanm. And this is going to give you the absolute path to the cpan binary. And that's it. Easy as that. We now have cpanm on our system which is going to be automatically initialized on the new sessions. We're now ready to install some Perl modules. Now how you can install modules is by typing cpan minus minus help to get a manual page. And here we can see to install a module, we can simply run cpanm and the module name, which is going to install a module on our system. Now there are other options you might want to run your installation with, which is this verbose option, that kind of tells you more information of what's going on when you're installing a module. You can also force install modules in case there are some dependency issues, but you're fairly certain the module is going to work anyway. And usually when modules are being installed, they also run tests, and you can specify a flag not to run those tests. And you can also install modules from a file, which is quite handy because you can keep track of all of your modules in a file and then run cpanm install depths and provide a cpan file, which has all the modules that needs to be installed. And there are others to explore, but we will focus on the simple command, which is cpan and the module name to install a specific module. The official Pro module repository is located at metacpan.org. So let's go there. If I search in Google metacpan, I'm going to see this link, which is metacpan.org. We go there. You're going to notice that it's quite minimalistic and it's straight to the business, so to say. You're met with a single search bar and you can use this to browse the massive module ecosystem. Let's say I wanted to find a module that can help me with converting between JSON string to hashref structure and vice versa. So what I could do, I could search for JSON. And on what I'm going to see here are a couple of options presented to me. It might be overwhelming at times and you might not know which module to pick, but most times you can simply choose a module which is at the top of the list. And if you want to find more information about that module, you can of course browse the name of it, see how much is being used to understand if it's the best fit for the job. Now if I select this JSON access, I'm going to be taken to the documentation. And usually the module documentation on MetCPAN is excellent. It gives you some examples of how to run this module, general description, any pitfalls, so on and so on. It's always good practice to read the documentation to understand if the module you're looking at is actually suited for the job. In this case, at the top of the page, I can see it does two things. It encodes a JSON, and supposedly it provides a JSON text, and it also decodes a JSON text, and provides a hashref or array ref. It all depends on the JSON structure. But at this point, I'm fairly certain that this is what I need. Now to install the module, let's copy the name. Let's go back to the terminal, and simply run cpanm, and then the module name, which is JSON, colon, colon, xs. If I run this, this is going to take a couple of seconds to install and that's it. It shows that the module has been installed on our system. Well, to be more precise, it's installed into location where the Probrew manages all the modules installed or the current Pro version we're using through the Probrew. So again, this is why the Probrew is quite useful because it keeps the things isolated from each other. Now, if you go to our editor and let's say we want to use this module. Now, how you do that is by using this use keyword that we explored before and then the module name, which is JSON, colon, colon, XS, and we can save the file. If we run this with Perl script, nothing happens. This is because we are using the module, we're not getting any complaints that this module could not be found, but we're also not using any functions from this module. So let's go back to the documentation. 
And here we can see that we can call encode JSON, which we don't need to explicitly import from JSON XS. If I copy this name, go back to the script. Let's try to print out a hash ref that is a valid JSON structure. For example, if I print dumper, and I'm going to wrap around the encode JSON function, and in this encode JSON, I'm going to provide anonymous hash ref. I'm going to end this with semicolon, and let's say I want to encode A key, which holds value 1, and B key, which holds value of 2. If I save this, run the script, and here we go. We can see that this is a string printed to a terminal with two keys, B, value 2, and key A, with value 1. Now the documentation also states that we can decode JSON, so let's try that. If I copy this method name, go back to the editor, and instead of encoding a JSON, I'm going to use decode JSON. Now here, what we can do, we can copy the string which we encoded before, and provide that instead of a hash ref structure. We save this, run our script, it's going to convert from a JSON string into a hash ref structure. So by now you probably have noticed that array refs and hash refs are quite similar with the structure of what is considered a valid JSON. So if I wanted to decode, for example, JSON array that holds a simple string A, save this, go to the console, you're going to see that this is converted into array ref with a single value of A. So it's quite easy by nature to convert between pro data structures and JSON structure. Now you're probably wondering, how can you find installed modules on your system? Strangely, there is no straightforward way to do it. One of the options is to use another module, which is called ext utils installed. And this module is going to give a list of modules currently installed on our system. So if I go to the documentation and look for ext utils colon colon installed, which is the second option, copy the module name, go back to the terminal, and if I say cpnm, install this module, we're actually going to see that this is one of the core modules, so you don't even need to install it. So if I go to my editor and use this module by extutils colon colon installed, it has a method which is called modules that we need to call on a new instance of this extutils, and it's going to return a list of module names. So what we could do, we could print dumper, and inside the dumper function, you could say ext utils installed new, so we're initializing a new instance of this class, and we chain a method on this new instance called modules. If I save that, go to the terminal, run the script, here we go, we see a couple of installed modules in our system. Note that we don't see stuff like exporter that we looked at before, or data dumper, and this is because this module does not list the core modules of Perl. It only lists the ones that we have installed on the side. It's still quite handy utility to know what's installed on your current Perl module path. This is it for this video. We looked at where to find and install Perl modules. I hope you found this video useful, and I'll see you at the next one.